share with you a new project I'm working on. It's called Questions from Atheists. So if you go to questionsfromatheists.blogspot.com, you can see this new blog. Basically, it's questions that come in from people who have atheist questions. Not necessarily all atheists, but um, have atheist-oriented questions. And we do our best to answer them. When I say we, I mean me. It's just a habit. It's the royal we. So... I want to talk about uh, one that came in that I thought was really interesting, and it is, could Jesus have intentionally fulfilled Jewish prophecy? Okay, so basically the, um, the case that's being made with this question is maybe Jesus wasn't divine, he just knew scripture. So here's, here's what the asker actually said. They said, Jesus knew the Old Testament. Could he have believed, or was he spending his first 30 years crafting a story of the returned king that would fit into the Old Testament prophecies? It's a really great question, um, and I, I've heard it uh, asked another way. So basically, let's simplify. Um, let's let's put it this way: Jesus knew the Scripture. Could he have intentionally filled, intentionally filled the Old Testament prophecies? So let's take a look at some of the prophecies and determine if that seems possible at all. That shouldn't be too hard. So the first thing I want to look at is, uh, comes from Matthew uh, chapter 2, and it says this, When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity and were, uh, that were two years and old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. So this is the important part. It then says, Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Okay, so what's going on here? This is the famous massacre at Bethlehem that is talked about in Matthew. And so basically what happens is the Magi tricked Herod, Herod got mad and was trying to find this um, this prophesied king of the Jews that was to come, and so he killed all the firstborn in Bethlehem under two years old. Okay, so that was prophesied in the book of Jeremiah. Matthew tells us that. You can actually look at the prophecy yourself in Jeremiah. And so remember that our question is, could Jesus have intentionally fulfilled prophecy. This is a great example of one that Jesus would not have been able to fulfill. Why? Because Jesus was about two years old at the time. Okay, and so um, it's hard to imagine that a two-year-old could orchestrate all of this, this very intricate thing, and also very brutal thing. So let's look at another verse in Matthew. This is in that same chapter. It says, so he got up, this is uh, Joseph, uh, the, the, um, I guess you could say the stepfather of Jesus. Um, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Okay, so here's another one that happens about, it's right after that massacre. It's right around the same time, of course. And so Jesus is about two years old, maybe a little bit older at this point. And so he's referring to a prophecy in Hosea written many years before. And so since Jesus was so young, again, it's difficult to imagine that a two-year-old could orchestrate and craft a situation in which he gets his entire family to immigrate to Egypt and then returns to Israel. And here's uh, one thing that, um, that that's really interesting about this, that there's a number of Old Testament prophecies that talk about the coming Messiah, but they talk about things like um, he, he comes from Egypt, but then he is going to be from somewhere else. So here's another one that um, connects to that. So this is in Matthew 2 also. It says, But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So here Matthew tells us what prophecy this fulfills. He says, So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. So what's interesting about this is that the Old Testament had both prophesied that, um, that the Messiah would come out of Egypt, that he would call his son from Egypt, that God would call his son from Egypt, but it was also prophesied that he would be called a Nazarene. And this was really confusing because those are two different 
places, right? And so some old, uh, some Jewish scholars of the time actually thought that the Messiah would be two different men because they're described, uh, the two sort of natures of Christ are described. There's sort of this severity and this king, but then there's this meek and mild kind of servant that were both identified in Old Testament scripture. And we now can see those characteristics in the person of Jesus, but at the time, it really kind of confused him. Uh, here's another uh, thing that Jesus would not have had control over, and it is his death. In John 19, this is a different book completely, in John 19, 35 uh, through 37, it says, The man who saw it has given testimony. So John's talking about himself here. He saw uh, what happened to Jesus. said, The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may believe. Now, it's it's somewhat common for John to speak in third person. So John didn't identify himself here, but he speaks in third person. And then he goes on to say this in verse 36. He says, these things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Okay, so he's talking about old, uh, old prophecy. And here's what the old prophecy says. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Okay, so these prophecies, as John says, predict that none of Jesus' bones would be broken in his death. So we know from history that it was customary for Roman executioners to break the crucified person's legs. What that would do is when their arms are out and uh, they're gasping for breath, they would reach up to take a breath and then they would fall back down, but they needed their legs to do that. Usually their arms were not strong enough when they're extended to do that. And so at some point, the executioners, after it had gone on for quite a while, they would break the legs of the person being executed. And so what's interesting is Jesus died before that could happen. Now they would have done it to Jesus, but he was already dead. It was confirmed that he was dead. And so that Old Testament scripture mentions, re really strange when you think about it, it mentions that his bones would not be broken, that the Messiah who was to come hundreds of years later would, would be killed and that his bones wouldn't be broken. I mean, that is mind-boggling that that writer could understand what was to come. And in fact, I would say the writer probably didn't completely understand what he was even writing. He was being inspired by the Spirit and, um, you know, who knows. So, very interesting stuff. So, the list goes on and on. Matthew, uh, specifically, is a really great place to look at um, the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. It's estimated that there are something like 300 prophecies fulfilled by him. Now, I've looked at these prophecies. Some of them seem really small and don't seem really obvious, but some are very obvious. Like when you look at Isaiah chapter 55 and things like that, it's it feels like it all fits together. I mean, it just feels that way when you read it. And so I would encourage uh, whoever's watching this to do a study on the fulfilled prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. That's redundant. The prophecies that Jesus fulfilled from uh, the old Jewish scripture. So, um, yeah, so that's what I have to say for that. So I would love for you to take a look at um, questionsfromatheist.blogspot.com. I'll probably get a uh, domain, I would guess, maybe just questionsfromatheist.com at some point or something like that, but that's not up yet. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, so hopefully we'll uh, continue to, to answer questions and uh, maybe change some lives. Who knows? All right, thanks.